today in the smuggler's room, you know, this isn't gonna work today. The environment, it's not right. I think we need to change the scenery a bit. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it's a room build day and that's coming up. What's up you awesome geeks? I'm Brian and welcome to the Smuggler's Room. This week, this chubby geek is, well, we're back in the room and we're working on the bench and we're gonna bring it alive. There's a lot of stuff to do, so let's not waste any time and dive right into it. Okay, to kick things off, we need to finish up the remaining panels for the bench. To be honest, this is just the fun part for me. What I constantly tell myself is not to overdo it. You can add too many details and clutter up the look really quickly. Personally, I like a certain amount of room to breathe between my greeblies. It's more interesting overall. We are asked constantly where we get the parts, and the answer is always the same. Everywhere. We collect from old computers, electronics, scrap aluminum, plastic lids, and so on. Just keep looking around the world and you'll see things every day that inspire you. Before we go any further, I think we need to talk about the electronics, which is what the bulk of this build episode is all about. And it might be easier if we show a diagram, so at least you see the roadmap of where we're going. For the electronics, let's start with an Arduino. Then we're gonna need some LEDs, we're gonna need a terminal block to wire all the LEDs to, and of course, we're gonna need a source of power. Now, with the amount of LEDs and the use of external power supply, I need something that I could solve a lot of problems with, and I decided to use a MOSFET. Now, we need to wire the Arduino to the MOSFET for control. We need to wire the LEDs to the terminal block, then wire the terminal block to the MOSFET, power to the LEDs, and then ground to everything. Okay, so, anyone confused? Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. There's a lot going on here. And then I introduced a MOSFET, which sounds more like a creature from Dagobah than it does a piece of electronics. So let's start there. Okay, a MOSFET is a type of transistor, specifically a metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, MOSFET. It has three pins, the source, the drain, and the gate. They effectively control the electrical current flowing between the source and the drain contacts. Basically, this enables electrical devices to be turned on or off. Let's look at how we'll be using it. This is a wiring diagram for one of our panels, and I drew one up for each panel. You can see that this particular diagram has three of the MOSFETs. This allows us to dedicate a pin or multiple pins from the Arduino to the MOSFET, which we will gate the signal between the drain and the source that allows our signal to go through. Think of this like a series of pipes where you have a valve for each pipe. And as you open a valve, you'll let the water flow through the direction you want it to go. Okay. 
Okay, so one thing I really wanted was the LED to glow properly without a hot spot. And that was the biggest challenge. But thankfully there's an awesome subscriber like you. And because of that, I learned all about packing material as a diffuser. Now I'm going to apologize right now because whichever one of you amazing geeks it was that told me about this, I can't for the life of me find your comment to share your name with everyone. So if it was you, say it loud and proud in the comments below because we sure appreciate it. This little trick and some Gorilla Tape was all that was needed. So much for my clever little acrylic LED boxes. Oh well, that's what happens. I'll tell you right now that wire management is a big obsession of mine. It stems back to all those years building custom audio video racks, but it also just makes working on all of this so much easier if it's clean. If ever I have to service these panels, I will thank myself for the extra time I spent now. Okay, let's talk about how I mounted the panels. I drilled through the MDF with a slightly smaller diameter drill bit than the hex head bolts I have. I then drilled in the bolts. The MDF was soft enough to create threads out of the material and it works pretty dang well. Typically I'd use nuts on the other end, but the only people that are gonna know about this are you and me. So let's keep that between us. Can I take a moment to say how much we appreciate our Patreon members? You may not believe it, but all of you make this channel possible. We thank you so much. We're also gearing up next week as we're gonna be sharing behind the scenes episodes, as well as sharing the design process that goes into all of our projects. Finally, we're gonna allow our patrons to help drive the projects we take on. That's right, we want your input on which projects we should do, which projects we should do more of, and so on. So if you're a Patreon member already, well get ready, it's gonna get exciting. And if not, then have a look below and consider joining us. Thank you very much. Now this is a massive terminal block, and if I had more smaller ones on hand, I would have used them. But I found this one in the junk lot from an electronics store, and it's perfect for this. Terminal blocks are a great way to sort out your wiring, especially in this case when we have multiple groups of LEDs. This allows us a clean way to land all of our wires, document where they are, and then be able to make adjustments and troubleshoot later.
Remember our portable soldering station? I mean, come on, my friends. Where else does it get better for a chubby geek to sit back, relax, and do a little bit of soldering? For this, I'm using a power distribution system made by Middle Atlantic. It has a range of terminals from 5 volt to 24 volt. It's not an off the shelf consumer product, but I'll link specifically what the model is for you below. And if you have a custom AV company near you or access to eBay, you might be able to pick one up if you're interested. All the electronics will sit here and this will still be accessible as we add other details to the bench. Now, what do you say we power this thing up, huh? Okay, the lights are cool, but let's add just a few more things to this before we wrap it up. Do you remember our custom DL44 display project? If you haven't seen that build, we'll post a link above and in the description. But this is where we have always intended it to be on display. We also needed some of that great looking wire loom tubing all around this bench. Now all of these little bits are adding layers to our bench corner, but we realize it still has a long way to go. We added a little space gray paint to the back wall, but eventually as we go along, all of this will be filled in. The blaster display looks great, but it will be completely part of the back wall design as we move along. Right now it's sort of floating in midair. We have props and collectibles that will be integrated into the bench above and around. And before you know it, all of this will look like one piece. I'm more excited about how this is turning out than I thought I would be. I'm so energized to get this fully finished and I'm crazy pumped to show you our Dejaric table design. I think you're gonna love it. Now, all of what you're seeing is really starting to come together and the space is starting to show at least little bits of what I've intended it all along. And I'm super excited. So we hope you're ready for some crazy updates and more projects, because we're back. We're back in the shop and we're working on a bunch of things for the room. We have some new projects that are rolling out, just more projects than we can possibly keep in our mind at one time. Because you know, we love building something out of nothing. And wild and crazy projects that were, nope. So we hope you're ready for some, nope back working in the shop we're ha <laughs> so we hope you're ready <laughs> so we just together maybe some dueling nope oh we just love building something out of nothing and we'll see you next time nope we're not gonna do that again <laughs> <laughs>